Welcome to the course on introduction to electrical engineering. We will have a lecture 37 today on single phase induction motors. Starting from outline of presentation, we will start with the introduction, then application of single phase induction motors, construction of single phase induction motors, followed by types of single phase induction motor, then operating principle of single phase induction motor, then equivalent circuit of single phase induction motor, then of course exercise and numerical problems of on it. So, coming to introduction the mostly small power generally below 2 kilowatt the induction machine have to operate with single phase AC uh, power supply and that are readily available in homes and remote areas. So, however, for constant speed applications the most frequent situation the induction motor are fed directly from available single phase AC power grid and in this sense uh, we can call them single phase induction motor. So, to be self starting the induction machine needs to a traveling field at 0 speed and this in turn apply that the presence of two winding in the stator while the rotor has a standard square gauge. The first winding is called the main winding and while the second winding call for starting called auxiliary winding and single phase induction motor may run only on the main winding once they are started on two winding. Thus, except for low power less than 1 by 4 kilowatt in general the auxiliary winding is active and during running condition to improve the performance. So, apart from the standard mention already for three phase induction motor, the dedicated standard for single phase induction motors are these IEEE 1184 IEEE standard for procedure for single phase induction motor, IEEE 114 modification with two in 2001, IEEE standard for again single phase motors and uh, again the modification in 2010 standard procedure for in test procedure for single phase motor. And IEEE 839 guide for proceeding testing of inductor motor polyphase motor, then NEMA standard for small electric motors, then NEMA another standard for energy management guide for selection and use of induction single phase motors and then NSI standard for motor and generator. So, now coming to application of single phase induction motors, I mean we have a end suction pump and then surface domestic single phase pressure pump then domestic fans which are probably manufactured, then domestic table fan, then exhaust fan, kitchen centrifugate, desert cooler, desert cooler pump and refrigerator auxiliary motor, then refrigerator compressor motor, then 2 HP air conditioner rotary compressor, I 4 refrigerator parts, air conditioner fan motor, then domestic vacuum cleaner, then room heater blower, then air blower motor, then 4 scooper pumps floor scooper machine, then washing machine motor, then single phase induction motor for air purifier, then food mixer, 45 compressor motor for aquarium, then domestic diesel generator, then machine tools application, single phase servo motor, then packing machine, food processing unit, pharmaceutical machinery and bottle filling machines, then automobile air compressor leasing single phase induction motor, then floor small rating single uh, phase floor mill, then the single phase saddle pole motor with the gear to speed from 1 to 70 rpm, mild, mild speed 120 rpm saddle pole gear motor, then saddle pole single phase induction motor fans used in cooler, frost free refrigerator, exterior medical equipment, display units and instrument fan, then your saddle pole motor and agitator motor, then saddle pole motor C frame motor for refrigerator fan then tap tape recorder set pole motor and vintage screw screwly scouting instrument tape reel record motor then swing machine is puller motor then your single phase motor for tie and accessory item then single phase electric motor driven pumping unit then large single phase induction motor for low starting torque application then single phase ac traction motor then 0.7537 kilowatt to 3.7 kilowatt bound reduce with single phase induction motor, then CNC machine loop and tank single phase motor, then conveyor drying motor, then your less than 2000 rpm single phase motor for industrial power for less than 10 kilowatt and single phase induction generator, typical example is I mean like a wireless shader pole induction motor, then your on discharge mechanic and rotary compressor and 20 horsepower single phase return pole motor then single phase self action induction with steady capacitor, then electronic load control for constant frequency operation of voltage regulation for a small driven single phase induction motor, then plastic parametric single phase motor with 220 to 240 volt, 
Now, these are the some applications now coming to construction of single phase neck motor. So, we have here again the square cage rotor similar to three phase and we have a winding in the stator. We have a two winding main winding and auxiliary winding and an auxiliary winding that we call it starting winding. We normally have a capacitor in series and then centrifugal switch which want to run only the capacitor start motor. So, this we call it capacitor starting winding is only for purpose of starting. Another is your typically extruded view of this single phase in the motor. I mean you can see different parts cage rotor then the winding and other parts name plate. Then your components of sing this single phase in the motor and cut way of this single phase in the motor. Then winding main winding and auxiliary winding how it is put into the slots with the concentrated winding. Then your closed view of typically notes in the laminations and extra heavy winding of the two turns creating a phase difference between the two section of lamination giving a magnetic field for direction for the shaded pole motor. And then the port of ceiling fan motor also shaded pole, but fixed winding instead of only one scene the rotor laminations are used to provide the smoother torque. Then your typically how look like a you can call it shaded winding and the cage bar. So, the rotor consists of lamination punched together with slot and the slots appear as tunnels when the rotor is assembled. The tunnels are filled with the aluminum pod in molten state and in some motors copper bars and copper endings are used form being bridge in the letter and the rotor slots are issued to achieve the equator operation. And these are the different uh, rotor bars you can a rotor with the aluminum cage bars and this is with the aluminum with the copper bars like. So, these are the different you can call it square gauge rotors like of different sizes different rating motors. So, these switches are used to cut auxiliary winding of the circuit when motor is attained 75 percent of synchronous speed in capacitor start motor and capacitor start capacitor run motor. These switches are centrifugally operated whenever is possible. They may be magnetic magnetically operated. AC electrolyte capacitors are used to mount outside the body of the motor for starting uh, or perfect correction of and these you can see there are two capacitors here one for run for one for starting so it is called start run capacitor single phase motor. So, now coming to type of single phase induction motor. So, three types of single phase induction motors are now used in today split phase induction motor, capacitor induction motor, shaded pole induction motor. So, the first is split phase induction motor has a main and auxiliary winding displaced by 90 or up to 100 and 220 degree. I mean, so and displacement is made by the changing the resistance and reactances of the two machines. So, this is the displacement between the current of the two or you can call it angle of the impedance of both the winding. So, connecting a capacitor in series with the auxiliary winding causes the current that I A to lead the current in main winding by 90 degree and complete the symmetrization of the two winding M F for giving a slip from home in this way. So, this is the that is the pure travelling air gap field may be produced either at a start s equal to 1 or at a dash equal to S n or otherwise in between. So, an improvement in starting and running torque density efficiency and especially in power factor is brought by the capacitor present and capacitor motors are quite a fee basic type. So, capacitor start index motor capacitor is only during starting then two value capacitor motor capacitor start and capacitor run motor then permanent split capacitor index motor then tap that is in normally used fan tap winding capacitor index motor and single phase capacitor index motor then capacitor three phase index motor for single phase operation. So, capacitor start index motor has a capacitor and a start switch in series with the auxiliary winding and the starting capacitor produces an almost 90 degree phase advance of its current I A with respect to I N in the main winding and this way a large travelling field is produced at a start consequently the starting torque is large and after the motor start the auxiliary winding circuit is operate opened by the starting switch and leaving only one uh, main winding and the large value of starting capacitor is not adequate for running condition. So, during running condition power factor and efficiency are low and this is typically the example of capacitor start. So, initially capacitor is decided at starting the angle between the main winding current and auxiliary winding current is 90 and net current supply is slightly lagging. So, but the capacitor because of centrifugal switch is cut after the motor comes to 75 percent speed like. So, the two value capacitor induction motor makes the use of two capacitor in parallel one for starting and one for running. So, starting capacitor is turned off by a starting switch while the running capacitor remains in series with the auxiliary winding and the two capacitors are side to symmetrize the two winding at a standstill starting and at rated speed 
I mean this is for starting, this is for running. Typically unwinding is also put in two sections or it can be only one winding, one for starting capacitor, another for running condition. So, one capacitor is only for both the capacitor comes at starting, but running condition only running capacitor C and E there. So, pumping that is split capacitor induction motor have only one capacitor in auxiliary winding which remains in action all the time. As the compromise between the starting and running performance have to be performed, this motor has a rather low starting torque, but good power factor and efficiency under test. And the reversing of this motor can be by this means how you are changing the supply virtually. I mean whether capacitor comes in series with the main winding or auxiliary winding. So, direction can be changed at every winding capacitor index motor are used when two or more speed are required. So, for two speed the T L N connection are highly representative Then main winding contains two section M 1 M 2. These the like a two speed motors normally in many applications are used how the winding are put into different parts for low speed and high speed. And this is the test center type with the capacitor in typical capacitor index motor. The split phase capacitor index motor start at the split phase motor and then commute the to permanent capacitor motor. In this way both higher starting torque and good running performance is obtained. The auxiliary winding may also contain two sections provide the higher capacitor voltage. And this is the typically how you can just put a start and running I mean with the auxiliary winding and winding can be also in two parts. So, shaded pole motors have a single concentrated winding, instead of winding with P246 pole connected in single phase in AC power grid, where the self for self starting display short circuited winding located on the part of the main winding pole. And the main winding current flows induces a voltage in the shaded pole, which in turn produces current which affects the total flux in the shaded pole. And switch flux is in shaded area is both space wise and time wise is shifted ahead to the flux of shaded pole. So, here you put a shading coil I mean and that causes the field to produce into our winding is one only that is uh, you can call it main winding, but the shading coils really give effect of this shading the uh, flux by speed degree and that is the how the shading coil is put it here and here and this is the main winding. The operating principle of single phase induction motor the operation of single phase motor can be explained in by two theory forward backward MF wave cross field theory. So, double revolving field approach decomposes the pulsating magnetic field into two counter rotating magnetic field and consider equation for especially spatially sensual distributed MF with pulsating magnitude and that is F T T equal to F sin omega T sin T P by 2 T time or you can say product of cosine and sin will give you F, F by 2 cos P by 2 T time minus omega T minus cos P by 2 T time plus omega T. And in this equation, the red section P cos P by 2 theta m minus theta e is a forward counterclockwise rotating and sinusoidal distributed m. The blue sections cos theta P by 2 theta m plus omega t e is the backward field cross pocket rotating sinusoidal distributed m. And this is the torque shifting characteristic. This is for forward, this is for backward, and this is the net torque, and that is why you do not have a any torque at the time of starting for this mode. So, now interaction between the field and the current induced in the rotor bars generates the cross opposite torque and under these conditions with only main field energized of the motor will not start. However, if actual torque moves the road motor in any direction the motor will begin to rotate. So, consider the single phase in a motor at stand still shown here. So, instead of winding is excited by single phase supply and this supply produces alternating flux which acts along with the axis of state of winding. So, due to this flux EMF gets induced in the rotor conductor due to transformer action as the rotor is closed one, this MF circulates the current through the rotor conductor and direction of the rotor current is just shown in the figure. So, direction of rotor current is, is so as to oppose the cause producing it which is a state of luck. So, now Fleming left rule can be used to find out the direction of the force experienced by the rotor conductor. So, it can be seen that the when phi x as a upward direction and increasing the positively the conductor on left experiences force from left to right while conductor on right experiences the force from right to left. So, thus overall the force experienced by the rotor is 0 hence the torque exists no torque exists on the rotor and the rotor cannot start rotating. So, there must be two flux separated, separated by some angle so as to produce the rotating magnetic field. So, according to cross field theory the external flux can be resolved into two components which are mutually perpendicular and one x along axis of external winding other x is a perpendicular to it. 
So, if initial push is given to the rotor anti clockwise direction due to that rotation, the rotor physically cuts the stator flux and automatically EMF get induced in the rotor. So, this is called a speed EMF or rotational EMF and direction of such EMF can be obtained by Fleming uh, right hand tool and this EMF page with the stator flux and direction of EMH shown in the in, in neck light. So, this is how we, it can start moving the EMF. It, you see denoted as E 2 n and this EMF circulate the current through the now rotor I 2 n. This current produces the its own flux called rotor flux phi r. This axis of phi r is at 90 degree to the axis of stator flux hence the rotor flux called cross field and due to very high rotor reactance the rotor current I 2 n phi r lags rotor EMF phi almost 90 degree. So, thus phi r is in quadrature with phi s in space and lags phi s by 90 degree in time phase such two flux produce the rotating magnetic field. So, different the direction of this rotating magnetic field will be same as that of direction of initial push given. So, thus the rotor experiences a torque in same direction as that of rotating field and that is the direction of initial push. So, the rotor accelerates in the anti clockwise direction and the case considered and attains a uh, subsynchronous speed in the steady state. So, now coming to equivalent circuit of single phase index motor, I mean we have equivalent circuit here. Typically, you can call it equivalent circuit of phase split. Uh, index motor. So, we have it both the winding this is with the typically you can call it with the main winding and this is with the auxiliary winding with the capacitor in series. The voltage applied is the same, but here is we have a capacitor and we have a this equivalent circuit with the A times because auxiliary winding have a resistance uh, I mean turns correspond to A times with the main winding. So, A is the turns ratio between auxiliary winding to main winding and this is the equivalent circuit for main or auxiliary winding how we really have. So, we have forward field and backward field in the main and auxiliary winding. So, the assumption is the main auxiliary winding are in the same space quadrature which is the other. A is the ratio of effective turns number of turns in the auxiliary winding to effective number of turns of main winding. So, when both windings are excited they produce their own forward and backward rotating field. So, consequently there are four revolving field in a two winding single phase motor and each winding can be represented by an equivalent circuit with two parallel branches and one forward branch and other four backward branch. So, a revolving field induces EMF in both the winding. It does not matter which revolving field sets up that magnetic field. It is common referred to those induced EMF are at the speed voltage. So, main winding is displaced forward in space by 90 degree electrical with respect to the auxiliary winding and the forward and backward field impedance you can write from the equivalent circuit ZF equal to RF plus JXF and putting the value here of entire impedance similarly for ZB for rotor and magnetizing branch and the induced EMF in the main I put it EMF EFM equal to I 1 Z F and e, EBM I 1 Z B and induced EMF in auxiliary winding forward is EF equal to I A I 2 I A square Z F and EBN I 2 A A square Z B. So, induced EMF in the main winding must be 1 by A times the induced EMF in the auxiliary winding due to forward revolution field and that is E 1 equal to minus J EF A by A that is minus J A I 2 Z F and induced EMF in the auxiliary winding must be 1 by A times the induced EMF in auxiliary winding due to backward revolving field that is E 2 equal to minus J B F 1 A that is equal to J A I 2 Z B and that comes to simplified equivalent circuit for main winding and auxiliary winding which have a forward field as well as backward field for main winding and auxiliary winding all the impedances and your capacitor also in series with. So, similarly the induced EMF in forward and backward branches of auxiliary winding and forward branches can be resolved into the main winding. So, E 3 is equal to J I 1 Z F and E 4 equal to minus J I 1 Z B. So, since all the induced EMF are known the application of which of voltage uh, can be coupled to the circuit I 1 R 1 plus J X 1 equal to V 1. Similarly, for auxiliary winding also equal to V 1 after substituting the induced EMF equation it can be written I 1 Z 1 plus I 2 Z 1 2 equal to V 1 and I 1 Z 2 1 plus I 2 Z 2 equal to V 1 and from where the Z 1 1 and Z 1 2 Z 2 1 Z 2 2 are defined here and from this we can find out the current in main winding I 1 and I 2 and then the line current equal to I L equal to I 1 plus I 2 and then we can find out the power supplied to the motor P in equal to real of V 1 I, I 1 I L is conjugate that is V 1 I L cos theta and instead couple losses for both winding is P S L equal to I 1 R 1 square I 2 1 R 2 R 1 square and by shifting the stator couple losses from the power supply to the motor the air gap power can be obtained and gap power is distributed among the four revolving field and air gap power developed by the forward field revolving the main winding is 
P air gap F m equal to real of E F m plus E 1 I 1 conjugate and that real of I 1 square minus J I 1 conjugate I 2 into Z f. The air gap power developed by the forward revolving field auxiliary winding P A G F A equal to real E F A plus E 3 I 2 conjugate that is real of I 2 square I A square plus J I 1 I 2 conjugate into Z f. So, net air gap power in both forward field P A G equal to P A G M plus P A G A and then putting the value like typically it comes I 1 is I A square plus I A square I 2 square into R f into 2 A I 1 I 2 R f into sin theta where I 1 is at theta 1 I 2 is at theta 2 and theta equal to theta 1 mi theta 2 minus theta 1. So, now the air gap power developed by backward revolving field in auxiliary winding P A G B will be real A B M plus E 2 I 1 conjugate plus E B A plus I E 4 I G 2 I 2 conjugate and that is equal to I 1 square plus A I 2 square into R B minus 2 A I 1 I 2 R B into sin theta. So, net air gap power develop will be P A G equal to P A G F minus P A G B and that is equal to I 1 A square plus A I square I B plus R F minus I B plus 2 A R F plus I B into I 1 I 2 sin theta and still, still R F equal to R B. So, the net air gap power develop by the motor is P A G equal to 4 A I 1 I 2 R F sin theta. Note that the net power develop at the time of starting is proportional to the sign of angle between the currents in the two winding. So, now coming to the typically the block, block load test and light running test. So, when auxiliary winding is open and when main winding is open. So, we do the block load test or no load test only with the single winding. So, when auxiliary winding open and main winding open. So, block load test with the auxiliary winding open. So, this comes only with the main winding. I mean like so, that is single phase supply. So, we get the certainly the parameter corresponding to main winding of rotor referred to stator as well as R 1 R 2 X 1 X 2 similar to 3 phase motor. So, during the test is kept block and a low voltage is applied to the stator winding to maintain the rate current in the main winding and voltage BBM and current IBM and power M are measured during the test S equal to 1 X m can be neglected. So, Z B m will be B m I B m and the total resistance in the circuit I B m equal to P B m upon I B m square and the total X m X B m will be under root Z B m minus R B m square and the equivalent resistance R B m of the motor is given R B m plus R 1 plus R 2 dash by E square plus R 2 by 2 that is R 1 plus R 2 dash. So, R 2 equal to R 1 minus R B m and the effective resistance of line frequency can be equal to R 1 by measuring the DC, DC test on main winding. So, equivalent reactance of the motor will be X B m equal to X 1 plus X 2 by 2 plus X 1 so X 1 by X plus X 2 dash. So, separation of X 1 X 2 is not directly possible. So, let us make X 1 equal to X 2 dash equal to half X B m that is under root Z B m square minus R B m square by 2. Now, block load rest in main winding normal. So, with the sing single phase supply voltage here. So, you can call it during this test the rotor cap block with the stator to maintain the rate and the, uh, the voltage B B and C A. This is with the auxiliary winding measure and S equal to X m can be and total resistance R B A P B A upon I B A square. So, rotor winding resistance is already known to rotor resistance can be R 2 equal to R B A minus R A. So, ratio is effective in the auxiliary winding may be main winding that is A equal to under root R 2 A upon R 2, R 2 is by block load test on the main winding and R 2 A is the block load from the block load test of your auxiliary winding and the no load test with the single phase supply with the main winding. So, during this test motor run without at it without at load at rate voltage and frequency the voltage V n L current I n L and power measure. So, during test S equal to 0 hence R 2 by S is large compared to X m by 2 total reactance of the motor is X n L equal to X 1 plus X m by 2 by X by 2. So, X 1 equal to X 2 equal to 0.5 X b m. So, X m can be calculated because X 1 X 2 are already been calculated from the block load rest. So, X m will be 2 X n L minus 1.5 X X b m. So, no load power factor can be cos phi n L equal to P n L upon V n L into I n L and the no load equivalent impedance can be general upon V n L upon I n L and the no load equivalent reactance can be Z n L equal to Z n L upon 1 root 1 minus cos e square final and then rotational loss be P r equal to P n L minus I n L square into R 1 plus 0.25 R 2. So, now coming to torque and output power mechanical power and torque can be computed by the application of torque and power relation developed for polyphase motor. So, electromagnetic torque uh, T m f of the forward field in Newton meter so 1 by s times the power air gap power in watt developed by the state of winding to a forward field where I is the synchronous angular velocity in mechanical radian per second thus T main f equal to P A G f divided by synchronous speed 
and similarly internal torque for backward availability and back B will be P gap by B into divided by omega s. So, torque of the backward field is the opposite to reaction that of forward field. So, therefore, the net torque will be T mechanical will be T main forward minus T main backward that is equal to 1 upon omega s P G F P gap F minus P G P gap B and forward field rotation is I R square S P G F and backward field rotation I square R will be 2 minus S P G B P gap B and total I R will be S P G F plus minus 2 minus S P G B. So, internal power B mechanical converted to mechanical form will be P mechanical 1 minus omega S T mechanical that is 1 minus S into P G F minus P G B. So, now coming to with sold numerical so, question 1 is a 230 volt 50 or 6 volt single phase phase split motor is rated 940 rpm the equivalent circuit parameters of the motor at R R 1 equal to 34.14 ohm X 1 equal to 35.9 ohm R A equal to 149.78 x 2 equal to x 29.32, x m equal to 48.59, r 2 equal to 23.25, a equal to 1.73 and c equal to 4 at rated voltage at 400 calco loss is 19 and the friction voltage is uh, the core loss is 19.9 and 1 by determine line current power factor efficiency is half torque and voltage drop also. So, calculating synchronous speed 120 f by p, so it is come 1000 rpm slip here putting a value of 940 and 0.06 and S B will be 2 minus S 1.94, omega m will be 2 pi n upon 60 that comes 98.47 and x equal to n power 6 2 pi n 50 that is 794 by 78 and we can calculate Z f by putting the values it comes 52.65 plus J 86 similarly Z B we calculate it then we can calculate Z 1 1, Z 1 2, Z 2 1, Z 2 2 and then I 1 and I 2 and then line current I 1 plus I 2 that comes 1. 0 to 7 at the angle minus 23.48 and power input 2230 the 1.203 cost 23.48 that is 254.56 and aggregate power developed by the forward and back field PGF calculated by formula is come 179.408 PAGB we calculate that comes 0 0.46 watt so, PAGB will be AGF minus PAGB 178.942 watt power developed PD equal to 1 minus S, S PAG that comes 168 and power output to P that is you are typically putting the value of this P for back and friction voltage losses it comes 146.426 watt and efficiency comes like output upon input that comes 57.5 percent soft torque is P upon P omega m putting a value 1.2488 capacitor voltage V c into minus I 2 x c putting a value it comes double 4.66 at the angle of minus 68.3 and for starting S equal to 1 S P equal to 1 using this slip we get the Zf equal to Zb and Z11 equal to this and Z120. So, we can calculate Z2 I1s comes I1s I2s IELS line I1s and 2.613 at the angle of minus 43.6 and Pn and Pag and a starting torque. So, coming to example 2 a single phase 120 60 hertz 4 pole capacitor run motor has the following equivalent square panel Xm X1 and 2 ohm x r m 1 m 1.5 ohm r 2 1.5 x 1 a 2 ohm r 1 a 2.5 x 2 2 ohm x m 48 running capacitor 30 microfarad turns ratio a equal to n a upon n m and determine the starting current and the starting torque of the motor at rated voltage. So, just putting a s equal to 1 to z f equal to z b putting the value we get the 1.2 at the angle of 54.85 and e f equal to a b if a b so we can get i m putting the value it comes 24.5 at the angle of 54 degree ampere I A equal to putting value in the formula it comes 1.42 at the 87.4 and the current starting current is I equal to putting the value of your I M plus I A come 23.4 at the angle of any starting torque putting the value of this we get the 0 0.318 Newton meter. Now, coming to example 3 a 120 volt 60 hertz 2 volt single phase next motor operates as 4 percent and has a rotor resistance of 2.5 4 ohm at each time still determine the speed of the motor, effective rotor resistance in the forward branch and back to back, effective rotor resistance in backward branch. So, coming to solution N S equal to 1 not 120 F by P, it comes 3600, slip is 0 0.04, so N S comes N S minus 1 S S 3 4 5 6 R P M, R F 0.5 R 2 by S that is 30 ohm, R B equal to 0.5 2 by S S 0 0.615 ohm. 
Now, coming to example 4, a 230 volt 50 S2 pole single phase induction motor is designed to operate a slip of 3 percent, determine the slip in the either direction, what is the slip a speed of the motor in the direction of rotation, if the rotor resistance is extended to 0 0.1 ohm, what is the effective resistance at the rate of slip in either direction. So, given a slip equal to S f equal to 0 0.03, slip in other direction S v equal to 2 minus S that is 1.97, the effective resistance in forward 0.5 by R 2 S f that comes 35 ohm and the effective resistance backward 0.5 upon S b, putting value which comes 0 0.53 ohm. Now, coming to example 5, a 230 volt 60 hertz trick pole single phase induction motor has a stator impedance of 1.5 plus J 3 ohm and a rotor impedance 2.J 3 at the standard still, the magnetizing reactance is 50 ohm, if the rotational loss is 150 watt at the slip of 5 percent, given the efficiency and the soft torque of the motor. So, S equal to 0.04, so omega is 4 pi f upon f 125.66 radian per second, omega m equal to omega s minus minus f putting value 119.37 radian per second and zf calculating the value it comes like 11.34 plus 9.97 j ohm and zb comes around 0 0.056 1.42 j ohm and z in equal to summation of all the impedance. So, it comes 113.296 plus 14.39 for j and input current I input will be 235 this impedance 11.736 ampere and P in equal to putting the V into I into cos phi that comes 1831.737 watt P G F will be I square into R F that is say comes 156185 watt P G V I square uh, R B equal to 62.801 watt and P A G will be your P G F minus P G V that comes 1500 watt and now gross power developed P D equal to 1 minus into 1500 that is 1425 watt net output power is P O equal to this P D minus coloss that is 12575 efficiency is output upon input 69.60 and T short is the output power divided by the speed that is 10.68 Newton meter. Now, coming to example 6, a 20 watt 50 hertz 4 pole single phase induction motor has a R 1 equal to 2.5 ohm, X 1 equal to 2.9 ohm, R 2 equal to 2.1 ohm, X 2 equal to 2.6 and X m equal to 14 ohm. If the friction voltage and core loss is 50 watt at slip of 4 percent, determine the efficiency and torque. The S equal to 0 0.4 and synchronous speed 4 pi f 1 p 157.08 radian and omega m equal to omega s 1 minus s putting a value it comes 150.79 radian per second and Z f then putting a value it comes 9.7575 12.7 j ohm and Z b similarly putting the value it comes 0 0.4748 1 1.2356 ohm and Z in equal to sum of both it comes of 12.7732 16.3. So, I, I input will be now voltage divided by this impedance 9.94 at the angle minus 52 point 52 ampere and P in your V i into cos phi that comes 1258.05 watt and P g f will be I square R f that is a 964.07 watt, P g v will be I square R f that R b that is 46.99 watt and P a g will be your P g f minus P g b that comes 917 watt and gross power develop P d equal to 1 minus S P a g that is 880 watt and net output power P g P d minus the losses. 830.47 efficiency is P out of 1 pin that comes 60.66.012 and T soft will be P output of 1 speed that is 5.507 Newton meter. So, coming to example 7, a 230 volt 60 years 4 pole 2 value capacitor motor rated at 1710 rpm. The motor parameters R130 ohm, RX136 ohm, R2 equal to 24 ohm, X2 equal to 30 ohm, R equal to 120, XM equal to 50, A equal to 1.75. Start capacitor 8 microwatt, run capacitor 4 microwatt. The rotational loss as full load is 25 watt. Determine the soft torque and efficiency at full load. What is the starting torque developed by the motor? So, here the for the solution NS equal to 120F by P, it is 1800 rpm and slip equal to 18 minus 7 10 into 18 0 0.05. Omega is equal to 4 pi F into this comes 188.49 radian per second. Omega m equal to omega s minus minus s comes 179.07 radian per second and Z of putting a value it comes 48.575 plus 96.66 J ohm and Z B equal to putting the value in all this 4.8 plus 13.608 J ohm and by calculating Z 1 1, Z 1 2, Z 2 1, Z 2 you can calculate I 1 and I 2 it comes 0 0.6815 at the angle of 
43.78 degree and z then i 2 will be your typically your 0 0.087 then i l i 1 equal to i 2 that is 1.2 at the angle of uh, 1.29 at the angle minus 11.55 angle and p n equal to v into i i l into cos theta that comes to 90.67 and theta is your 15 that 59.17 and P A G calculating P A G putting value it comes 198.25, P A G B it comes as around 3.8 and P A G will be A G F minus P A G 194.6 and P D is your 1 minus H and your P A G that is 184.64 and P output is your loss P P D minus losses that is 159.64 and efficiency P output of 154.92 and T short P out of 1 omega that is putting value 0 0.8915 Newton meter. And for the starting torque S equal to 1, we can calculate ZF equal to ZB that will be Z11, Z12, Z22 and I1 and I2 and then theta, PAG and starting torque. It comes 1.0362 Newton meter. Now coming example 8, a single phase to 120 volt, 60 volt, 4 volt capacitor start motor has the following external pressure main winding is 5.5 plus J 4.8 ohm and auxiliary winding your 8.5 j5 ohm determine the value of a starting capacitor required to produce the 90 degree phase shift between the current of main wind of the line compute uh, compute compare the starting torque with the without winding so well coming to the solution zm plus pi by 2 that is zm auxiliary z main is 5.5 into plus j.48 and z auxiliary is 8.55 so tan inverse putting the value of xc so xc comes your 179.96 microfarad and then we can calculate I m putting the value it comes like 16.438 minus at the angle of minus 41.11 degree and I equal to V upon the auxiliary winding impedance that comes 1.12 at the angle of minus 30.47 then I auxiliary with capacitors we get 9 point and torque without capacitor with capacitor it comes value it comes 0 0.2425 and torque with capacitor comes 4.108 time with the 2 without capacitor. Now, there are some unsold problem which you can solve in the same manner as we have discussed the sold problem and these are the reference from which we develop this lecture material and thank you very much like. Mm -hmm.